Hello, hello. I know you guys forgot about Roller Masters. Don't worry. I'm still here on YouTube, kind of. I know it's been a while since my last video. I do apologize. I've actually been working two jobs. I've actually been pretty busy, working a crazy amount of hours, but I'll try to be more consistent once the daughter goes back to school and I have more of a consistent uh, work schedule. All right, so today we'll be taking a look at the Mad Motion Luba All Wheel Drive slope mower. Yes, this is one of the first mowers that can handle pretty tough hills up to 65 degrees. Also, since it uses GPS, there's no perimeter wire like on the old school robotic mowers which you had to lay around your foundation or your yard. This you literally just set up, set up a beacon and you're good to go. So let's go and check out this new mower and see what this thing is all about. Okay, so one thing you may notice is how quiet it is. Yes, less than 60 decibels is probably like on par with like a conversation. So yes, run this at night without disturbing the neighbors. Now, how this works is it actually uses razor blades, not like a giant cutting blade like on a traditional lawnmower. So it cuts down on noise. Also, the fact that it only cuts a few millimeters off the top of your grass. So it kind of looks like a golf course after a few mowing sessions. Now, one thing to note is this mower does have an automatic adjusting blade. You can adjust it from 1.2 inches up to 2.8 inches. I do recommend the higher height so your grass has a chance to grow a little bit longer. Okay, well, if you're from Colorado, you may know that we've been having a lot of rain, which is probably good for the vegetation. Last year, it's been a drought and my grass looked like a desert, but it seems like it's been coming back, even though there's some uh, brown patches. Okay, so you may notice that I have both mowers running. That smaller one is my old model, which I've been running for about two years now. Now, the main difference is that old model uses a primer wire. And yes, it was a pain to set up. It took me about two and a half days to get all adjusted and right. Well, this newer mower what, uses GPS and there's also a beacon. And once you get the beacon set up, properly i actually have it up on my roof it works pretty well it may take some trial and error i don't recommend just using the stand if you do have areas that will block the beacon because it is kind of like line of sight so if you can put up as high on the roof as possible free from trees and overhangs and once you get all set up this mower works pretty well all right so another thing may notice is the way it can just like detect objects. There's just this front bumper and up top there's actually four ultrasonic sensors which work pretty well detecting fairly small objects. I will demonstrate how it was able to in real time detect certain objects. So let's say for example your kiddo leaves a ball out on the lawn or you happen to be out and a thing occasionally bumps into you. It will not try to eat you. It will just kind of gently bump into you or it'll be able to detect you and just kind of go around it. Also, it does make some noise letting you know that it did detect an object. Okay, so I'll briefly go over the setup process and also how the app works. Yes, there's an app that works over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also cellular. Yes, this thing also has a built-in SIM card. So, for example, if this guy decides to take a trip beyond your yard, well, you can track with the app where it's at via a GPS. Also, since it uses cellular, it will actually ping its location so you can easily find your lost mower. All right. You can see how well it actually docks uh, as long as it has a good GPS signal, docking was not an issue and it just kind of backs up um, pretty seamless. There was no hiccups with the docking process. 
All right, so the setup process is pretty straightforward. The instruction manual walks you through everything. You actually can download the Mad Motion app to iOS, iPhone, or to Android, the Google Play Store. Now, one thing to know is once you have the app, you do have to be pretty close to the robot because it uses Bluetooth connection to steer the robot. Yes, you're actually driving this thing like an RC car, just kind of go around the perimeter and the app will actually track where the robot's at and create that perimeter. You can see I'm actually pretty close up to the rocks area and the robot has no issues uh, being able to determine where the border is and where the obstacles are. Now, Keep in mind, if it loses GPS signal by your mapping, it will let you know and it will just pause for a minute until it obtains a GPS lock. So, like I said before, highly recommend keeping that beacon as tall as possible from your roof, especially if you have a lot of obstacles, trees, overhangs, or if you have a front yard, backyard, it allows for the best possible signal. Well, I thought I was a good driver. Maybe I should just let the robot do its thing. So you can see I'm controlling with Bluetooth and I'm not the best driver. Uh, trying to film, have a controller in a hand, trying to avoid obstacles is just a little too much for me. I think they need to revoke my driver's license. All right, let's have a look at the app here. It's a man motion app. Um, one thing to know is you can see the live map right there as I create my boundary and once you create it, you can actually establish more boundaries by actually going outside that boundary area and creating another boundary. It's pretty straightforward and within that boundary area, you can actually drive the robot to an area, let's say maybe the doggy bowls or the playground. You don't want it to kind of mow around there. You can actually set boundaries not to mow there. All right. so. You may see some errors if you happen to lose GPS, it will let you know. And it also gives you a lot of information about what the robot's doing. So the app itself is pretty informative. I do like it's a pretty simple and straightforward layout. Okay, so you can see there's different colors. The turquoise is my main yard. And then the darker blue kind of looks like an ocean is my front yard. And then that yellow kind of circle blob thing is a boundary area. And I just create a little path so it tells the robot to go from one area to another. So for example, maybe you have like a small narrow strip, concrete strip, or even just like a walkway. You can actually have the robot just drive across from there. It's called like a little narrow channel or something that you can create to connect the two uh, areas. Okay, let's go and give you my final thoughts. This is, again, just my initial preview video. I will have more of an in-depth video, maybe like how to set up, set up the beacon and all the unboxing stuff and more of my in-depth video. But I really want to give this a full season so I can figure out the quirks and some of the navigation issues. Now, so far, it's been working pretty well. Um, the unboxing experience was pretty straightforward. I will probably do more of in-depth. I was talking this part. It was pretty long in-depth details of how to set everything up. But basically, I was just able to stake down the charger, plug everything in, and then put the beacon up in the area where I was able to find signal. Now, that was probably the trickiest part. I originally had it on the dock station, but I soon realized all the trees I have and also my house blocking the front area, the robot kind of lost connection so if you can mount it up on top of your roof or maybe on a tree area this unit does come with an additional power station so you don't necessarily have to have the beacon connected directly to the dock but that's just something to uh, note well if you guys are still here i appreciate you watching this entire video it does help me out and i do apologize again for taking so long to upload a video i've just been super busy i know it's no excuse I need to be more consistent, but I'm glad that you were able to watch this video. And if you are getting a robotic mower, um, let me know in the comments. I can help you out because even though this is a more advanced mower, it does cost a lot of money. And I think the cheaper models may be just fine if you don't mind setting up a perimeter wire. And if you have any issues with setting it up, let me know. I have had experience with three models so far. And overall, it's been a pretty uh, straightforward process with all three models. Well, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Adios.